Okay, spring is almost here and I have quite a few things to get done before I launch this year. So I'll be doing a series of projects and hopefully documenting them on video. Starting with the impeller. So the situation here is that uh, I tend to chew up uh, a lot of impellers. Uh, here's one, uh, probably because I, I do a lot of dry starting, uh, especially off season. Um, occasionally I'll get a bad one. This one, the, the brass or, or bronze core here actually came unglued from the rubber part. And thankfully I have a policy of always checking to make sure that water is coming out of the, the transom when the engine's running. And I was able to catch that before it melted anything. Um, so here's the cover. Uh, the impeller goes in there. Here's the cover. These are the original screws. Um, I'm going to try using some of these brass uh, thumb screws. That'll make changing out the impeller a little bit easier. Um, also, so this is an original gasket, which I need to replace. But I've been using um, RTV sealant, which works great. But the only drawback is that you need to um, let it dry. And uh, lastly, here's what I'm using, a run dry impeller. Um, I didn't even know they made such things uh, and I was able to find it. Um, quite, a, quite expensive, but I think I got this on clearance last year, so uh, not too bad. And now I've got that in there. So I just worked it in, in there. Uh, I know that this spins counterclockwise from previous experience. So I just kind of bend these in the opposite direction and kind of just work it in there. Some people will use a cable tie or something to hold it, but uh, I find it unnecessary. Okay, so my silicone RTV uh, gasket maker went hard. So I thought I'd make a temporary gasket, just use this old one and cut a new one out of some thin cardboard. Now fully installed, nice and shiny. So those little thumb screws will allow me to just simply um, uh, take the cover off to check the impeller uh, as needed without using any tools. And after some extensive testing using the raw water hose in a bucket of water, I have no leaks in here whatsoever. So, um, I've run the engine over the course of two days um, uh, and I haven't seen any leaks. The, this, these thumb screws are actually just hand tight and that little cardboard gasket that I made has not leaked at all. So you can see me running the engine here um, with no issues. I didn't even have the clamp on the hose and here's the water shooting out of the transom. Um, but uh, the object of this modification is to be able to quickly check the uh, impeller when necessary. So I could just uh, unscrew these and screw them back down. If that gasket uh, turned out to be a problem, I did make several more out of cardboard. However, I also made one out of neoprene and um, we'll see how that works in further testing. But otherwise, this was a very worthwhile modification. Next, I am going to replace the alternator on the engine. Um, it is working, it is charging the battery. However, I noticed that uh, recently the light comes on on the engine panel um, and I believe that it is uh, just not charging well enough. So the, in other words, the current has reduced. So I did buy a new alternator. This one is uh, aftermarket, it's obviously not Yanmar. Uh, but being that this one still does work somewhat, I'll probably keep it on hand, maybe even uh, get it rebuilt if, if I can. So to remove the alternator, there are two bolts, one that goes through here and one here that uh, goes on the adjustment arm. Uh, the arm itself does not really need to be removed, although loosening this bolt uh, when I install it is probably a good idea. So much for only being two bolts. So this one, uh, I could not get it out because this was in the way. 
which means I had to remove the entire bracket. Uh, these are 14 millimeter. This was 12. The one on the adjustment arm was 12. And then there was also the pipe for the fuel line, which was connected here, and that needed to be removed. Plus a bunch of electrical connections. Um, all relatively easy, with the exception of maybe the one on the adjustment arm, which was rusty. Uh, but I just to give it some tapping for a while and broke free nine times out of ten that technique works for rusty bolts and now I've installed the new one so I just put those two bolts in here um, here uh, the bracket that goes into the engine block I left this one loose and I left the pivot arm loose also uh, in order to tighten the belt, which is done by just sticking a screwdriver in here and prying this way to tighten it, and then tightening this one from behind because it actually screws into the alternator. Um, I did that, got the belt tight, and then I tightened up those other two pivot bolts and tightened this one as well. If if I were to try to tighten this belt while this one was tight and the top pivot bolt were tight, as soon as I start the engine, the belt would loosen. Um, as I found out from experience, and I'm sure many other people have done that as well. And after running the engine for a little while to check things out, everything looks good. The charging indicator light on the engine panel is no longer illuminated. And the belt itself, after running the engine, is at just the right tightness. So I can check this one off the list and move on to the next one.